We're talking to Kansas 1st District Congressman Tracy Mann as he is going to be in Reno County and McPherson County on Wednesday of next week. And I wanted to talk to him a little bit, not only about those events, but about events in Washington more generally. Tracy, thank you so much for your time. I want to start with the impeachment vote of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. Your office sent out a release on that. I know you voted in favor of that, and that was a relatively close vote, I think is putting it mildly. Uh, It was a close vote. Why do you think it was close, number one? And number two, why did you vote for it? Uh, Yeah, great. Thanks for having me on uh, this morning, Nick. Great question. You know, it baffles me a little bit that it was so close. Because to me, it, it's an easy decision. You know, the Constitution gives the House of Representatives the sole power of impeachment. And it states that civil officers of the U.S. can be impeached for treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors. And when you look at um, Secretary Mayorkas, what's happening at the southern border, his willful decisions not to comply with our nation's immigration laws, breaching the public trust of the Congress and American people, uh, it, it just uh, it's unfortunate that it's to this point. Something must be done, though. And uh, and so voting yes uh, was was, I believe, the right vote. And I uh, did pass the House. And so it goes over to the Senate um, for, for further proceedings. So here's uh, the question. I, I mean, granted, that is one piece of this. But also there's a bigger policy question here. Um, in order to truly secure the southern border, that is a millions, if not billions of dollars and years of constant effort problem. What should happen next here? Well, there, there's a host of things. I think um, you got to be crystal clear, though, Nick, you know, um, under Mayor watch or since Biden's come into office, we've had 8.3 million folks come to the country illegally um, today. There are at least a dozen things the president could do today that would not completely solve the problem, but would see, we would see the numbers plummet. And these are policies that the Trump administration put into place that when Biden came in, immediately reversed course. Things like if, if, if the Border Patrol tells us that if the president would just reinstate remain in Mexico um, and also end the catch and release, they think that illegal immigration would um, drop overnight by as much as 70 percent. And that's something the president should have done uh, two years ago, could do today. Outside of that is, yes, there's a, um, a really good bill, H.R. 2, the Border Security Act, which I proudly supported. That's the long-term fix, but there's a lot of actions the administration should be taking right now um, to deal with our wide-open southern border. I, and I know that you don't want to use – health regulations to to uh, to f- solve immigration problems. But COVID really gave us an opportunity to, for perfectly good reasons, say, hey, let's fix this border situation. And yet it, it didn't happen. And then this administration has decided to turn around and, and even undo some of the things that were done by President Trump for health reasons, but that turned out to also have good, uh, good backflowing policy from those. Uh, why do you? Is there a rationale in your mind for what uh, for what President Biden has done regarding the southern border? No rationale, Nick, that I can see. I mean, I understand. Last year alone, we had more people come into the country legally than the population of Kansas. You know, let, let, let that sink in. Um, we have. Um, almost 200 people that we have apprehended at the border that are on the terrorist watch list. Um, what the scary thing is, we don't know all the folks that have come in that we've not been able to catch, um, or, or that were caught and then released. Now, this is a national security issue. That's uh, a human trafficking issue. It's a, it's a drug trafficking issue with all the fentanyl that's coming across. And it just makes common sense. The, the, uh, understand that when Biden came into office, took the, you know, was inaugurated, Later that day, signed an executive order that undid the remain in Mexico policy. Um, and, and so what that basically says is if you come across illegally, what, what Trump instituted, um, used his um, authorities as president to say, you, your case will be processed. You have to return to Mexico. You have to remain in Mexico while your case is being processed before you can come back over. 
today people come across seeking asylum. Um, they can come into the country and then they um, remain in the U.S. while their case is being processed. Most of those cases aren't even being processed. So remaining in Mexico, instilling that alone would cause these numbers we're seeing to plummet, and the president is just not willing to do it. It's very, very frustrating. Well, and uh, there's also the issue of uh, what they what they say are gotaways, the folks that we don't know where they go once they are let go and said, given a court date, and, and you say, come back. Um, have, have we gotten any good answers on that? Uh, no, we really haven't. <clears throat> Understand... Um, and gotaways, many times, these aren't people that aren't even apprehended. That, that These are people that Border Patrol sees, has no interaction with, is not able to get to. And so a big concern I have is, you know, we know we have as many as 200 people on the terrorist watch list that have been apprehended. But think about it. If you're coming into the country and, and you have nefarious intentions, um, you're going to do everything you possibly can do to uh, make sure that you're never apprehended in the first place or you're a gotaway. So we don't even know who's in the country, what their um, process. I mean, it, it, meanwhile, uh, you, you know, folks that do it the right way, that go through the process, can spend years. So I don't think anyone looks at this and says anything other than our current immigration process is broken. But absolutely, we've got to secure the border uh, way past time the administration does it. Um, and, and unfortunately, the Secretary Marcus is simply unwilling to enforce the laws, uh, which is what uh, you know his, his duty and responsibility as Department of Homeland Security Cabinet Secretary. You're going to be in McPherson County and Reno County both on Wednesday morning next week. And so I wanted to let folks know if they want to come talk to you nose to nose, that that's where they can do it. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, we did uh, – Oh, I think we did 20 town halls in the month of January this month. Next week, we're going to do another uh, dozen. And really, for me, Nick, nothing replaces getting out, talking to folks. Yeah, we'll be in uh, Reno County on Wednesday morning. We'll actually, 8.30, we'll be in Bueller at the Sunshine Meadow Retirement Community. From there, we'll go to McPherson County. Uh, we'll be in Lindsburg, and then we'll work our way north. I'm certain you could go to our website, uh, man.house.gov, and get our full schedule. But, uh, but but looking forward to our town halls next week, and, uh, and and hope to see folks out there. All right, quick question. Um, other than the border, which we spent quite a bit of time on, what are the other things Kansans are asking you about? Uh, you know that, that's that's the biggest thing. Um, certainly, farm bill is uh, you know continues to be worked on. Um, that's very significant for our state. Uh, government funding. You know, Congress has continued to kick the can down the, the field. I voted against those bills that would do that. They passed. So government funding here, um, part of the agency's funding ends um, here uh, early next month. The others, uh, in, different times in March. But government funding is uh, is coming up here very quickly as well. All right. And yesterday afternoon, your office sent out a release about uh, unlocking our domestic LNG potential. We're talking about liquefied natural gas, lifting restrictions on the import and export of that. Uh, Fossil fuels in general, uh, leave alone LNG, are something that, uh, that there's a difference of opinion between particularly the House side and the administration on. Yeah, without question, you know, this this war on fossil fuel, on liquid fuel from the administration, I don't get it, Nick. It makes no sense to me. You know, we have been oil independent, uh, fossil fuel independent. We have tremendous capacity to produce our own fossil fuels, a lot of it in Kansas, um, good for, for our oil and gas producers, good for other industries as well. Why we rely on imports from Russia and Saudi Arabia and other countries make no sense to me. Um, this bill that I voted for uh, here here last evening would reverse some of Biden's um, you know, requirements and regulations. We've done a series of these proudly to support it. We've got to stand with our uh, Kansas and, and the United States independent oil and gas producers. Do you see the um, Ukraine funding bill going anywhere on the House side, or are they going to, uh, or or is that going to go anywhere? It seemed like the Speaker wasn't real interested in it even after it passed the Senate. Well, and on the House side, I've been very clear that we're not going to do more money for Ukraine um, without securing our own border. You know, you know, why would we spend uh, another sixty billion dollars to help another country secure their their border? We won't even do anything about our own. 
So, so that's a prerequisite. That makes sense to me. I agree with the speaker's approach on that. Um, and so until the administration uh, is willing to get serious about, about the border, um, you know, it's just it, I, I don't see it. And the, the speaker just been very clear that um, no Ukraine funding without border security. So we'll see uh, if the administration is willing to budge on that. And uh, Senator Marshall, last time I talked to Roger, um, saw immigration as the top issue in the 2024 election cycle. Do you feel the same way? Uh, yeah, as it currently stands, absolutely. I, I think that's right. And I'll tell you, when I do town halls uh, last year, this year, this issue comes up. This is on the top of mind for, for folks I'm talking to, people that come into the offices or that come into or call our Washington, D.C. office or other offices. Yeah, it's uh, front and center for people, as it should be, when we've had 8.3 million uh, people enter the country illegally over the last um, three years. So, yes, yeah, the number one issue, as it should be, way past time. Um, the administration was got serious and was willing to do something about it. So what can you do from your seat to say, hey, we – let, let's get serious about fixing this. What's a, what, what's the next piece of must pass something where the speaker and leadership and, and can, can kind of force everybody to the table to say, hey, this is something we have to do now? Well, if the votes are there, government funding uh, you know, would, would be uh, the next thing. I voted for uh, last fall, you know, um, you know, tying government funding to securing the border. By the way, the House last year, about 10 months ago, passed House Resolution 2, the Border Security Act, Nick, um, the most comprehensive border security bill that's passed the Congress in decades. And it would do everything that needs to be done. It would reinstate policies. It would codify them so they would stay in place at all times. It really walked through, um, addressed how do you secure the border, what does the funding of that look like, Where are the, you know, what, what are the steps there, a host of other things as well. So the answers are, if we're, if we're serious about securing the border, are in the Border Security Act, H.R. 2. And that's what, as passed the House, that's what we need the Senate to take up and the President to end up signing if, if we're going to truly address the issue for the long term. Well, and and I, I apologize, Tracy, and I promise I'll ask you about more than one thing when I see you in Reno County next week. Uh, but I really wanted to spend a few minutes on this issue in particular, not only because of its importance, but because without – Without a secure border, there's just no way to – none of the other issues matter if we don't have a country to begin with. Yeah, you know, we got to have our border secure because it comes down to the safety and security of our great nation. And, uh, and, and so if you don't have a secure border, you see what's happening with drug trafficking, human trafficking, bad actors coming across uh, th- this border. It's, uh, you know, it, it's absolutely – is not of a national interest – to, to not have a secure border, um, which will dramatically help in making sure that everybody in our country is, is, is more safe and more secure.